have with me somebody who's just starting to be an author. I'm kidding, of course, Rick Renner. <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for coming Thank by. Thank you, Gene. Uh, you know, I, I have two books that, you know, that one of these would be a great achievement. But these two really stood out, and I was asking about the timing because these came out before COVID, The Last Day Survival's Guide. But this is the, the best title of a book uh, Did you like that? I liked it. And you showed this to me. I'm like, oh, this is great. How to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy. People call it the crazy book. It is the crazy book. Developing discernment for the last days. Let, let me ask you about that. How do we develop discernment? That's a great That's a great. Story. Well, if you don't know the Bible, you're probably not going to have discernment because Hebrews chapter 5 says that's what exercises you and you're right. able to determine what's right and what's wrong. And, Gene, the problem with our society today is people don't know the Bible. We have a whole generation that's correct. that believes nonsense is true. That's right. And that's why I wrote that book. Well, it's good. Now, all of these books, they can get at Renner. Renner.org. Renner now, the other book, Last Day's Survival yes. Guide, that was on my heart to write for years, and I wrote it right before COVID. Yeah. And I'm telling you, when COVID hit, people began ordering that book like, I mean, they could not print that book fast enough. Well, it's it's truly an amazing. I, I have I have not read this one. I need to read this. Well, it's yours, so take it well, home. Thank you, thank you. But Gene, I'm real excited about my next book. Tell me about the next one. Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, for years I've been studying a site in the mountains of Ararat, right? Which was allegedly Noah's Ark. So after years and years of study, I decided to go there with my film crew. You know, I live in Moscow, so it's very easy for me to go to those places. So we all flew to the mountains of Ararat. And in the lower mountains of Ararat, it's what the Bible says, is a huge ship-shaped formation. And now because of all the scans they've done, it's Noah's Ark. They know it's Noah's Ark. I mean, what other ship would be in the mountains of Ararat? Yeah, it doesn't mean, because people get confused. Mount, they think there's a Mount Ararat. Well, there is. But there's the, the Ararat mountain range. But Mount Ararat is a stratovolcano. Got it. And so if it had landed on that, it would have been blown to bits. Right. Or it would be under hundreds and hundreds of feet of lava. Yeah. But just 18 miles across the valley, also in the mountains of Ararat, is this massive formation that is 300 cubits long, exactly like the Bible says. Yeah. And Gene, when you're actually on top of it, it is so immense. I yeah. mean, what God had Noah do and the technology that was required and in fact, they have found wood there at that site, and it appears to be laminated wood. Well, no wow. one ever knew what gopher wood was. Right. Probably the word gopher should have been translated kofer. It describes a laminated kind of wood, and that's what they have found there. Amazing. Which means God gave Noah remarkable technology. Okay, but Rick, how, how do people, how did you find it? I mean, we've heard about, oh, we found Noah's Ark all through my whole life, you know. And, but, but I haven't seen the site until you showed it uh, at church one Sunday. How do we, uh, how did you get to that place to understand this was really it? Did someone tell you? Well, I did my research. I read about it. Right. And then I read what all the historical writers said about Noah's Ark. And Gene, there is a plethora of information about people who went to see the Ark in ancient times. Right. And guess what they wrote? They wrote that if you take the Silk Road Yes. and take a detour and just go down several hundred feet, you come to the Ark. Well, the Silk Road is on the ridge of Iran, right above this site. It's exactly the site. Wow. And I filmed a lot of programs right on the very bow of the ship. I mean, it sticks up just like the bow of the ship. Right. And when you walk along the sides, you can see the, t the deteriorating ribs of the ship all the way down the side. And the new scans show three floors, multiple rooms, a corridor, which is still not filled with sediment. It's still an empty corridor. Wow. And these are the ground scans you did. The, well, I didn't do them. They, they, they were done by experts. And not far from where the ark landed, now this is where it really blew me away. There is a stone that is immense. And in the top of it, there's a channel that's been cut out with human instruments. And the local Kurds that have lived there for thousands of years say that is the stone where Noah offered his first sacrifice when he came off the ark. And Gene, wow. when you're on that stone, it, I felt like it was the most hallowed place I've ever been. It would be wow. the oldest altar in the world. It's true. And it you could be. just imagine the rainbow appearing overhead right there. But anyhow, so I've written a new book, which is called 
fallen angels, giants, monsters, and the world before the flood. Because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it's gonna be just like that again before the coming of the Son of Man. So I felt like I needed to really explore what was happening in the world in the days before Noah. There was a lot of perversion, right? a lot of weird, weird, bizarre things. Yep. And Jesus said it will be replicated at the end of the age. And I believe it's already started and it's gonna get a lot weirder well, before we get to the end. We definitely have the perversion and the weird things. Oh, yeah, Talk about do. the, uh, you quoted monsters. How do we know there's monsters? You mean in the ancient world, how do we yeah. know there were monsters? Yeah, I'm asking. Well, first of all, you have the record of history. Okay. And, you know, people think that the ancient people were just primitive people with overactive imaginations. Right. They were not. They were the source of logic, mathematics, architecture. I mean, these were brilliant, brilliant people. And they lived much closer to the event when the angels came down and had sexual relations with women. The women gave birth to giants. And there's an ancient document which says the giants defiled the animals. Just like the angels defiled the women, right. the giants defiled the animals. And that word defiled carries a sexual connotation. Well, it was about the same time that the giants appeared that ancient history talks about monsters. And what's amazing is if you look at all the ancient civilizations that had no contact with each other, they all carry the same echoes of the same monsters, mythological creatures, which probably were a result of bestiality between yeah. the giants and the animals. Wow. It really that makes was, sense. Well, so think about what's happening today. Right. We have transgenderism. Now, if you are not happy with transgenderism, you can choose transhumanism. Yep. And they're messing today with genetics and DNA engineering. In China, they're trying to mix human beings and pigs to produce a new kind of a person. Somebody says, well, uh, this is impossible because the Bible says everything produces after its own kind. Well, that's the way it was supposed to happen. Right. But you can violate law. Yeah, that's it's, true. It's happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. And when the angels fell and did their deal, it was a violation that created something monstrous. And it's really a great lesson that you're not supposed to mess with nature. You're not to violate the laws right. of God. It always produces something horrific. Wow. Anyway, it's been quite a revelation. So that book me. will be out when? I think it's going to be out in August. In December, I wrote two books. I wrote one book that was 450 pages and another one that was 450 pages. And what are those? One is called Renner A to Z. Really? Well, I'm not interested. It's like an anthology of everything I believe. I pulled out quotes from all 50 of my books for a quick reference for That's pastors. Awesome. Yeah. And for partners to be able to say, well, what does, what does Rick say about this or this? And then the other book was Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World wow. Before the Flood. Now, Rick, you you know, I, I want to grow up and be like you. One oh, day. come on, Gene. Because, because By the you, way, you, for you, those that are listening, Gene and I have known each other a very long time. <laughs> That's right. Very long. But I mean, you told me, you know, you go to the beach, Rick likes to sit there in the room and write the, write a book. You, I don't you, ever go to a beach. Never, you know, never, never. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's the way. I think that's so cool what God has empowered you and gifted you in. It just comes so natural. Well, you know, you have to turn your negative into your positive. <laughs> and my negative is my threshold for boredom is very, very low. Yeah, it's true. And I, so, I, see, I knew we were alike. I have to be busy. So I need to write more books is what you're you saying. You can do it, Gene. Okay. By the way, for those listening, Gene has a new book coming out that is really good. Yeah, thank you. Killing America. Yes, thank you. All right, Rick, uh, we, we can find all of this information. Go renner.org, renner.org. You can also watch uh, Rick's program on the Victory, Victory Channel. And thank you uh, for that. Thank you. Thank you for thank being you there. For it's always very interesting. And thank you for coming by. I'm glad to be with you, Mr. Bailey. I love Rick, Rick Renner. What a great guy. Listen, he talked about our new book. Terry and I wrote this new book. It's uh, Killing America, Turning the Tide on the Tsunami of Darkness. It's available for pre-order. Watch this. It's breathtaking. In a few years, we watched America slide into lawlessness, madness, and darkness. How can we have fallen so far, so fast? Now, just when it's most needed, a new book offers a diagnosis and the cure for what ails our great nation. The disease, a tsunami of darkness, threatening to wash away all we hold dear if we don't act now. 
In their book, Killing America, Turning the Tide on the Tsunami of Darkness, Gene Bailey, host of the groundbreaking news program Flashpoint, and his wife, Terry, go beyond a litany of outrage and tragedy and chart a course that leads to America's restoration and renewal. In it, you'll find hope, help, and even humor as you discover inspired keys to counter that tsunami of darkness with a deluge of everlasting light. Don't wait. Order your copy at killingamericabook.com. The book releases July 2nd, right before July 4th. Listen, get your copy. You can pre-order uh, by going to killingamericabook.com and see the book that my wife Terry and I wrote. Terry was really uh, a big driving force in this book because she would get really upset about something and we, we would really take off on it and go down something because of what we're dealing with in America. Rick Green, you know, this is, it's great to be married to the right person, isn't it? <laughs> no doubt about it. We know who the brains of the operation is. You're just yes. a pretty face, Gene. That's it. So, That's it. Yeah. It, it, hey, I, I want to tell you why I love what y'all did in the book. It was like we were talking about earlier, what you focus on. You know, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of bad. Uh, but to really solve problems, you have to acknowledge the bad. You got to know what's going wrong. Most people tend to go into one of two ditches. They either get depressed because of the bad or they're almost Pollyanna. They're just like, wave the flag. I love America, but they don't have any real solutions. You guys looked at the real problems. You, you point out what's actually happening so that people can be awake. But then you talk about real solutions, and that's what people are hungry for. They want genuine conversation about how to turn this thing around. So thank that's you to both. Right. Well, thank you, Terry, for writing the book and doing all the hard work. Thank you, Gene, for smiling and, and putting your name on it. Yep, you got it. Absolutely.